the key of A is very important for rockabilly, for uh, blues, blues in A, very common, mainly because it opens up the whole neck and the chords that support it are actually pretty easy to play. We already know two of them. But now we're going to fill it out a little bit, okay? So here's the A7 that we've played, right? And now let's take that A7 and let's take the third finger and just press it, push it up one string. Fourth finger, okay, and put that right underneath that. So what you've got here is you've got three fingers all smushed together, all fitting them into that second fret. And that can be tricky because some people's fingers are a little bit bigger, but you've got to press it all into that second fret. And that is a full A major, okay? Now, for some people who do have some difficulty with that, there is another option, okay? The A chord can be played since all of those fingers and all of those strings are in the second fret. You could take the first finger and you could just simply bar from the fourth string down. And that will get you the same chord with a little additional flavor, being that the first string, now playing in F sharp, is actually the sixth of the A chord. So now you're getting an A6. Now, the A6 can be substituted for the A major in many many cases but there are times when it doesn't doesn't really work if it doesn't work what you can do is you can simply kind of release on the finger a little bit just release that finger upward like that so that you don't play that first string and if you do that you can still get that a chord by just the one finger it takes a little practice to get that, but it can be done. Otherwise, the two, three, and four works fine, okay? So, what we've got now is we've got A7 and we've got A. So A7, you open it up a little bit, and then A. The second finger does not move. It holds the foundation between A and A7. Now. Here's another way to play A7, okay? When we play this A7, the seventh of the chord, the G, which is seven up from A, right, is actually in the middle of the chord. So when you're playing A and you go to A7, you can hear the change, but to make it even more pronounced, there's another way to play A7, and that is if you are playing the A in a bar, you take that third right? finger and you go to the third fret, first string, and then you're playing a G, and that is again the seventh of the A chord. And but what it does is it puts the seventh at the end of the chord, at the highest note. So now you're hearing a really strong version of the seventh. So here it is again. Here's the A. Here's the A seven. And then here's the A7 again. So A7, simple version. A7, more expensive version, if you will. Okay? Same chord, two different ways to play it. Either one can be very effective. Now, let's go from the A to the chord we really want to focus on today, which is the E. Okay? Now, it's easy to go from A to E because A, the two and the three, okay, which is taking us now back to lesson one, right? The two and the three together, we're going to push them back up to where we played the E minor, okay? But now we're going first to add finger, to that, will, and the first finger is going to go on the third string, first fret, okay? So you might remember this form from the A minor that we learned in lesson one, okay? Same form, everything is exactly in the same place, just moving up one string. Okay, so you're seeing how things so are coming A, together. A7, E. Now, to expand this idea just a little bit more, we can take 
the third finger off of the E chord, okay, third finger off, and that gives us the simple version of an E7. So just like we did A, A7, we've got E, E7. Now, if you want a more expensive version of the E7, again, you can bring the seventh, which in the E is a D, right? A D note. Here's the E7. We can take that little finger and come all the way down here to the second string, okay? Third fret, and put the D down there. So we've got E, we've got the simple E7, and if we want to put the D down here, we've got the the more full version of E7. And with okay. a simple little strum, which is a one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and speed it up a little bit, right? One, two, and three, and four, one, two. Well, that's all right, Mama. That's all right, baby. That's all right, Mama. We're going to stay the way you do. That's all right. That's all right now, Mama. Baby, baby, baby. Okay, so it's A, 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 A7, D7, D7, E or E7, D7, and back to A. So that's something you can play with. Again, we're playing the A, one, four, five, A, D7, and E7. Now here's another song that you can throw in there. And this song actually incorporates quite a few of the chords we've learned. We start with a C chord, actually, and then we go to an E or an E7. And then we go to our good old friend F chord, okay? And then back to the G, A minor, D7, and then finish it off with F, and then G, and then C, okay? You can actually just play on the first beat. You can play C, 2, now think about the next chord, E7, 2, 3, and then F, three, four, and then G, two, three, four, and then A minor, three, four, and then D7, two, three, four, and then F, and then we have to do a G, and then we go to C. But to practice that, get your chords down first, just playing on the first beat. Then, as you get more comfortable, you can do two beats. Gives you time to think about the next chord, right? The most important thing is that you keep a steady time. Eventually you go to three beats. One, two, three. Think about the E, two, three. Think about the F, two, three. Think about the G, right? And eventually you're playing all four beats or maybe not. You don't need to play all four beats. Uh, maybe you're doing that old boom chick thing that we did. So you're gonna go grab your coat and get your hat. There's our E, E7, F, grab your daughter at the doorstep. A minor, redirect your feet. D7 on the sunny F, finish it up G, C. Do. Okay. If you're getting really good with that, boom check. This is a great way to play that's alright, right? Well that's alright, Mom. That's alright for you. That's alright, Mom. Oh, any way you do, that's alright. That's alright. That's alright now, Mom. Any way you do. I'll see you next week.